just by way of summary here so the wind vane itself um, you know attached to the transom really compi comprised of three main pieces one the wind vane itself which is uh, connects essentially is the thing that catches the wind then it's the gear linkage um, you know here and here which I won't go into quite now um, <clears throat> attached solidly to the transom and then of course the rudder itself and uh, so the first stage of setting up your hydro vane wind vane is actually just putting on the wind vane itself onto the back of the boat here so it's, it's actually pretty simple pretty simple setup just attach it like that tighten this up and uh, you are essentially ready to go that is the uh, the first step um, second step actually is putting the, uh, the rudder on itself which uh, right, uh, right here and uh, <clears throat> I've already got it pre-tied the first step is you uh, lower it down uh, into the water on this line which is tied off here with a figure eight on a bite. Um, the rudder itself, pretty heavy. It's probably 25 pounds. Um, I think it's high density polyethylene. Um, you know, so super strong. The, uh, the only issue really that I've had with it is uh, if you leave it in the water, marine growth does grow fairly quickly on it, even after a month. So I pull it out of the water and store it on deck so that it doesn't get marine growth on it. And so the first step is lower, just basically lower it down. It's tied to the boat. Um, and I recommend this, uh, having the safety line on there, you know, at all times in the event that it does come off, you've got a, a belay line on it. So that's essentially the first step. To actually put the rudder on this can be a bit of a wrestling match because uh, you're upside down in the water so the first if there is any marine growth on the shaft uh, wipe it off with your hands or some abrasive and uh, the, uh, you gotta get the rudder to the bottom of the bottom of the shaft and uh, slide it up. Which is a bit of a, a bit of an effort, but uh, the trick is to get the pin in <laughs> while being upside down. one of the definitely one of the challenges okay come on okay actually got it in there pretty good and then once you got the pin in there's a safety clip and uh the uh, uh leave the uh this as a belay line it does come off you don't lose it um, and just make sure that it's loose enough for the rudder to turn but uh, tight enough short enough that it doesn't get caught in the propeller well that's the next step which uh, of the process which is uh, of course it'd be a little easier if I backed into the dock and uh, did it from the dock, but the boat's uh, this way, so it is doable. If the boat had more freeboard, I wouldn't be able to reach it from here. So the first piece of the puzzle here, when you're when you want to activate the wind vane, is there is a pin here 
which you take out, which now allows the wind vane to move. Um, and then the second pin is actually down here. So now when I take that, now the, now the wind vane is actually steering. So you can see the wind is actually blowing the vane over to the side. And now the tiller, its tiller is now steering. So if the wind comes, uh, you know, if the wind's on the center here, then uh, this thing moves. So if I move, you know, the wind in theory is, you know, is blowing this. You can see the linkage post you know traveling as as the wind moves and then continuing so you see the, the that's the the tiller and then of course the rudder is actually moving there you can see it moving back and forth so that's essentially the nature of the operation um, right now I've got this set really on practically in irons with this this fa facing almost directly forward. The next thing we'll do is we'll uh, show you how to set the boat for say uh, a beam reach. We'll keep it simple. Okay so the next piece of the puzzle here is how do you adjust it for a particular for a particular tack and that's what this is here. This is a string so you can do it from forward. You don't have to go out onto the back of the boat. Um, so you'll notice here um, I can rotate this now the, it's actually turning and uh, I'm now bringing this, the vein itself, around and uh, so now we are set up, uh, essentially that's about a beam reach there right now. Um, and the wind um, actually is coming from the other side but uh, um, the, uh, so that would be a beam reach. Um, if you bring that, continue it all the way around, and uh, uh, you can see, you just keep it going. Well, now there's now we're rigged for a run. That would be a dead run. And uh, you know, if you want to come up on the other tack, you just keep it, keep it coming around. And uh, so now we're we're on a beam reach uh, on the other tack, and coming up to. Uh, to close, uh, close hauled, close hauled on this tack. So right now, uh, the uh, that's a right about where we're. That's about close reach. We're actually on a, at a close reach on the dock right now. So you can see if I if I trim if I trim back the other way, then the, uh, the the wind catches it on the other side, and the boat you know would steer itself. So. That's effectively how you, it's as, it's as simple as that to set the angle to the wind. And um, um, the other piece here I'll show you here, and I'll give you a, a close up of this, but I'll show you from here first, is there is a neutral position with this thing if you move it all the way to the right. And now the rudder moves and you can see this now is not is not moving the rudder. This is now in neutral uh, effectively. So you can turn the rudder, the wind vane doesn't move. There's three settings. <coughs> three settings. Um, so the, the farthest to the left setting gives the boat the least amount of rudder. And of course, the, uh, the, the last setting, of course, you can see now see how I'm getting a lot more angle on the rudder there for the same difference in wind angle. So if you're in waves, you may um, want to get it more ruddered. On this boat, I, I put it in the middle setting, but if I'm in, in bigger waves, then I'll need to have more rudder. On my 26, most of the time, I had it in the uh, less rudder angle, unless I was getting chased by 15 to 20 footers uh, 20 foot waves on a broad reach. Um, so that's effectively the gearing, if you will, uh, on it. So it's as simple as that, um, from neutral to, uh, you know, super, uh, you know, that this gives me uh, lots of rudder and then I can move the thing and, I'll, and it'll give me less rudder. Uh, so that's effectively 
Um, the operations now will give you a close-up. Okay, so this is the actual gearing now, and you can you can see the actual action, the mechanism there of this post, um, which the wind vane rotates this post, which then acts like a gear and turns the rudder. So there you go. On this on this setting, where the post is furthest furthest away up this fork. Um, that's the least amount of rudder. Now, if you want more rudder, then you move, you move this setting further over to there. And now, now I get more angle. So I'm, I'm giving the boat more rudder. If you watch that now down there, I can give the boat a lot, a lot more rudder. Then the middle setting, you know, self-explanatory in between the first and the third gear. Um, and then the neutral position is is where that post is now vertical and the whole thing rotates around it But it the wind vane does nothing um, That's effectively how it works um, to take the the motion of the wind vane on Let me put it back in gear so we can see it the wind vane itself is pointed trim to the sails it moves back and forth which moves this shaft that shaft is connected to a pin there which now that moves up and down the shaft from the wind vane on a on that hinge and moves that shaft up and down which then moves this whole thing up and down which moves the pin which knit which then uh, translates the motion of the rotation onto the vertical axis, which at the end of it all um, turns the rudder. So it's an exceptionally clever design, really super compact and uh, no running lines into the cockpit. Um, and so, just one last angle here. This thing is set now on a about a beam reach. Uh, pointing on a starboard tack and uh, the mounting onto the back of the transom. This one uh, is, rud is, is mounted center in behind the rudder. You can also do it offset and then you can see the, uh, the rudder you know, down below with the mounting. On my other boat it was offset because I had stern tiller and um, the rudder was in the center line but I had it mounted slightly offset, about 12 inches. Um, again, just one last view of uh, the mounting from the back. So yeah, so that's the, uh, that's the hydro vane, the operation of the hydro vane. Um, very compact, um, you know, lots of moving parts, but um, doesn't have the, the, the trim vane and the uh, the lines that run into the cockpit onto the tiller as some of the other designs have. It's all uh, very compact. Um, what I would call a very, very elegant mechanical technical solution to the problem of steering using the wind so the, the skipper can be free to do other things. Um, I have single-handed uh, this boat and my other, my last boat, like the Contessa 26, um, over 3,500 miles so far on this hydro vane. Um, and um, the, uh, I will uh, be, uh, I moved it from my 26 foot boat to this boat. I gotta say, I love the thing. I've used it in all wind conditions and um, I've used it. Uh, uh, on all points of sale and um, very very satisfying yeah the one last adjustment that I didn't uh, show you here on the wind vane was you can set the axis you undo this and now you can now rotate this forward or back um, which is a bit like a um, sort of the uh, almost the, the twitch angle <laughs> The response 
time. This would be, you know, very much, a little more, a uh, little more sensitive, and uh, you can move it down um, to change the angle backwards. I find that um, when I'm on a dead run, um, that I move it back, and um, if I'm close hauled, then I can bring it forward a bit. Uh, but on a dead run, I, I uh, find it's better rotated back. That's the last uh, uh, other adjustment on this. You can also get different shaped, uh, different shaped veins. This is the standard vein. Uh, you can get uh, uh, more of a square shape. And uh, I'm not fully fluent on uh, the, the effect of the different shapes, but I've had good luck uh, with this shape for sure. I'm going to set the wind vane here. I'm uh, sailing on about a close reach right now. I'm actually on jib only. Wheel pilot is holding the compass bearing. Um, and uh, I'll leave that for now. Hold this, uh, hold this course on the, uh, uh, on the wheel pilot. What the wheel pilot does is uh, it kind of automatically adjusts for the, uh, the lee helm, which I've got right now because I'm on jib only. Um, so that'll, the idea is you adjust the wheel for a lee or weather helm, and then you adjust the wind vane afterwards. So right now, I'm going to bring this around and adjust it for the tack that we're on approximately. That's about, that's about right there. And uh, I've got the bottom. Bottom pin is out, got the top one still in. Now I'm going to shut off the uh, the uh, the wheel pilot. Um, it's actually steering me downwind a bit. I'm probably just going to center it for now. Center the wheel, pull the pin, and now we are steering on the wind vane. And uh, okay, so she's heading up, so I got to head down. Okay. I'll just sort of watch here. That's kind of a beam. I probably, well, we also have some current here as well, so we'll just let her settle in. Um, I may want to see if I head down too much. The, uh, if I head down, I gotta bring this back up into the wind. So I'm now I'm starting to head down a bit too much. I wanna, I wanna head up. Starting to, yeah, there we go. I'm starting to come around now. Uh, and let's see. Might be a bit. Uh, okay. Here we go. We are steering now. We'll. Uh, in the range of appropriate wind actually has just calmed down a bit uh, but uh, the, uh, actually I have the engine running and it's going to kill it it's in, in, I had it in neutral so we're, we're on wind only now and uh, slightly slightly ahead of we're, we're, we're close reach um, and the wind vane is steering, so you let. I think I'm pretty happy with that that course. I'm I'm cheating a bit, um, <laughs> being lazy here for the sake of the demonstration. I don't have the main up. Normally, you want to have the boat as balanced uh, as you can uh, with the sails before you fire up the wind vane. Just for the sake of the example. Uh, I, uh, I've got her on this angle there right now, so we're, yeah, we're just, just slightly ahead of a beam reach here and we're doing 4.6 knots over the ground. 
So yeah, we're just showing you we're actually in Gwem's channel and we're about uh, uh, we've got about eight knots of wind here, true, and uh, slightly ahead of a beam reach there on the apparent wind. You can see that jib only, and um, the uh, you can see the wind. So the wind vane is steering there. Um, we're on a on a uh, starboard tack right now, and uh, you can see the angle uh, on the wind vane. You know, rigged for uh, close reach. And the gearing is uh, on the center position, and uh, for the sake of this, I've got the uh, the wheel actually just just handling the uh, the lee helm just a slightly um, to take care of that. And a uh, little bit of a you know a mix of wind today here in the channel, um, kind of eight to fifteen. And, uh, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's wind vane steering. So I've come off the wind onto uh, broad reach here, and then just show you, just kind of show you the operation here. As I point the leading edge of this back on the boat, that takes us further downwind. You can see the you know the rudder now it's turning, going slightly downwind. A little further we can keep going all the way to a dead run and if we want to come up um, okay so now I'm going to come up bringing this so there you go now you can see the rudder is actually turning the blade is hitting the wind on the other side and I'm going to keep coming up wind you know uh, there's broad broad reach when this is when this angle is 90 degrees to the boat that's a beam reach on the apparent wind so I'll bring us up to a beam you notice the mountain in the background is <laughs> we are turning and uh, we're just, just coming around to a beam right now and uh, I keep that turn going the uh, this will take us up to uh, close hull, so the boat's still, the rudder's still turning. That's basically the operation. Now, usually what I do, so it's easy to come up and down wind on the same tack. Where it gets tricky is when you want to tack. So usually, if I'm going to tack, um, I, uh, I do the tack manually, old school, and uh, so to do that, you know, I'll disengage the wind vane, I'll, uh, I'll lock it off with the pin, and now I'm steering myself, so I'll complete the tack and do all the work on the sails. Uh, I'm going to come around, I'm going to do the tack manually, see if I have enough boat speed to uh, come around. Once that jib is backed, uh, it should bring us around. We'll see if I have enough have enough boat speed to get around. Uh, it may not. So yeah, as I was saying, we were close hauled. Probably go up a little higher there, but uh, we're on jib only. Um, I know that's not the most efficient uh, for being close hauled. Beautiful day with uh, Mount Baker in the distance there, covered in snow. It's November 25th, so uh, it's actually a beautiful day for uh, November, gotta say. Uh, Anyway, that's all for now. That's uh, kind of the end of our little introduction and tutorial on the operation of uh, Hydrovane Wind Vane. She is operating and she's loving it as we speak. <laughs>